I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. So ends the passage from the book of Revelation, read every year at this significant celebration. Christ Jesus is at the center of our existence. It is he who convokes us this evening to celebrate the mysteries of our salvation. He has called each one of us with love beyond all telling and given all of us a role in the salvation of humanity. Tonight, we celebrate the joy of priesthood coupled with the abundance of blessings in the sacraments and the ever-present desire for more workers for the harvest. Last year, at the Chrism Mass, Pope Francis stressed the nature of our imperishable joy in the priesthood. And I quote, the fullness of the gift which no one can take away or increase is an unfailing source of joy, an imperishable joy which the Lord has promised that no one can take from us. It can lie dormant or be clogged by sin or by life's troubles, yet deep down it remains intact like the embers of a burnt log beneath the ashes, and it can always be renewed. Paul's exhortation to Timothy remains ever timely. I remind you, I re remind you to fan into flame the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. Meditating and rejoicing in the joy we have received allows us to experience both the power of both Isaiah and the Lord Jesus, who experienced the Spirit of the Lord God upon themselves. That is a reason to rejoice and to examine how responsively we have used the gifts of our ordination. Today we celebrate the privilege of bringing the message of salvation to the women and men of our day. We know that we must find ways to insert that message into the midst of an ever more oppressive secularism that fills the society where we must preach. Today we renew the promises of our ordination in the context of the perfect prayer we give thanks for our vocation and this perpetual ministry in the church. We are inserted into that long line of priests who assure that the sacraments are administered to the faithful and that Christ's promise to be with his church to the end of time is indeed fulfilled. We cannot master the task without his help. We are his church and the people he has called. Again, Pope Francis offers us food for thought. It is the living church with a first name and a last name which the priest shepherds in his parish or in the mission entrusted to him. That mission brings joy whenever he is faithful to it whenever he does all that he has to do and lets go of everything that he has to let go of, as long as he stands firm amid the flock which the Lord has entrusted to him with the injunction, feed my sheep. This evening we invoke the Spirit once again over the oils to be used in the celebration of the sacraments throughout the coming year. The symbolism is rich. The oil is pressed out from crushed olives, a fruit which very old trees continue to produce. 
it reminds us of the perpetual newness of divine life. Even when it flows forth from ancient rites and in accord with centuries of tradition, the pressing also aptly describes the condition of ministry in the archdiocese. A reduced number of priests striving to serve the same or an increased number of faithful. It describes well the ministry of my faithful auxiliaries and mine, ruled by airline timetables, distances, and commitments across the globe. Think about the celebration of the sacraments, even by a very old priest who can still change bread and wine into the body and blood of the Lord and nourish a community, who can still restore health by forgiving sins and anoint the sick. The image of our late Archbishop Dimino comes to mind. To his last breath, a priest, as his annotated breviary attests. The image of oil is rich, however, because it flows, penetrates, and is difficult to clean. So also is divine grace. It flows from the sacraments. It molds and changes the hearts of those who meet Christ in them. Here we see the innocent face of a baby at baptism or the eagerness of a catechumen about to be anointed in the scrutinies, or the earnest and questioning expression of an adolescent before confirmation. We also see the wounded man or woman on the roadside in a foreign land or at the infirmary as he or she waits a medical evac evacuation to Landstuhl. Let us also look at the hands of our co-sponsored and see there the abundance of divine grace and favor. All are here spiritually this evening, and we invoke a blessing upon this oil, which will be used in ministry to them. Then we are able to hand on what we ourselves have received. We generate life in the spirit, we allow the olive press to squeeze out the remaining invigorating drops of oil to glisten and gladden. Thus, the relationship with Almighty God is kept strong, and we too, with the psalmist, will sing of the goodness of the Lord forever. At this most significant and unique liturgy, let us also renew our plea to the master of the harvest to send workers into the fields. The harvest is rich. The needs are many. Help all of those whom the Lord is calling to heed his voice and to respond with the generosity of the Blessed Virgin Mary's fiat celebrated in tomorrow's solemnity. At this Chrism Mass, I ask the Lord Jesus to enable many young people to discover that burning zeal which joy kindles in our hearts as soon as we have the stroke of boldness needed to respond willingly to his call. To all of the baptized here, I exhort you to live the fullness of your faith to allow the fragrance of the gospel in your hearts to permeate our desperate world. Joy, boldness, response are all virtues that Mary exemplifies in her words to the angel Gabriel. Prepared by divine grace, she simply complied with the divine charge. Each of us has been endowed by Almighty God with gifts and talents to be used in building up the body of Christ. Today we are reminded again 
that the Spirit of God is upon us and we are invited to act on his indwelling to build up the church, his body. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end of all. We are on pilgrimage to dwell with him for eternity. We only have to place him at the center of our lives and follow his lead. Let us pray that God, our Almighty Father, will bless this oil so that all who are anointed with it may be inwardly transformed and come to share in eternal salvation. Father, we thank you for these gifts you have given us in your love. We thank you for life itself and for the sacraments that strengthen it and give it fuller meaning. In the Old Covenant, you gave your people a glimpse of the power of this holy oil. And when the fullness of time had come, you brought that mystery to perfection in the life of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son. By his suffering, dying, and rising to life, he saved the human race. He sent your Spirit to fill the church with every gift needed to complete your saving work. From that time forward, through the sign of Holy Chrism, you dispense your life and love to men. By anointing them with the Spirit, you strengthen all who have been reborn in baptism. Through that anointing, you transform them into the likeness of Christ your Son and give them a share in his royal, priestly, and prophetic work. And so, Father, by the power of this love, by the power of your love, Make this mixture of oil and perfume a sign and source of your blessing. Pour out your, the gifts of your Holy Spirit on our brothers and sisters who will be anointed with them, with it. Let the splendor of holiness shine on the world from every place and thing signed with this oil. Above all, Father, we pray that through this sign of your anointing, you will grant increase to your church until it reaches the eternal glory where you, Father, will be the all in all together with Christ your Son in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever. 